Welcome everyone, join us today as we deep dive into the life and legacy of John Entwistle, the legendary bassist of The Who. Known for his innovative playing style and commanding stage presence, Entwistle left an indelible mark on rock music. So let's dive in. John Alec Entwistle born the 9th of October 1944 in Chiswick, Middlesex, England. He was an only child, born to parents Herbert and Maud. Herbert played the trumpet, while Maud played the piano. Following their separation shortly after his birth, Entwistle was primarily raised by his mother at his grandparents' house in South Acton. The rarity of divorce in the 1940s contributed to Entwistle's reserved nature and limited social interactions during his upbringing. Entwistle's musical journey began at age seven with piano lessons, which he quickly grew to dislike. Upon entering Acton County Grammar School at 11, he switched to the trumpet and later moved to the French horn when he joined the Middlesex School's Symphony Orchestra. During his second year at school, he met Pete Townsend, and together they formed a trad jazz band called the Confederates. After playing only one gig, they shifted their interest to rock and roll. Entwistle found it challenging to hear his trumpet amidst the louder rock bands, prompting him to switch to guitar. However, due to his large fingers and a preference for the low tones of Dwayne Eddy, he opted for the bass instead. Crafting his own bass at home, Entwistle soon caught the attention of Roger Daltrey, a former schoolmate who had been expelled and was working as an electrician's mate. Daltrey recognizing Entwistle's talent, invited him to join his band, The Detours, as a bassist. After joining The Detours, Entwistle played a crucial role in encouraging Pete Townsend's guitar talents and insisting on his inclusion in the band. At this stage, the group consisted of Entwistle, Townsend, and drummer Doug Sandham, a semi-professional musician several years their senior. In 1963, Roger Daltrey, previously the guitarist, transitioned to become the band's frontman and lead vocalist. The band experimented with several names before finally settling on The Who, with a brief stint as the high numbers in 1964. During this period, Entwistle, still working as a tax clerk, dyed his light brown hair black to help Daltrey stand out more. Additionally, around 1963, Entwistle briefly played in a London band called The Initials, which disbanded after a planned engagement in Spain fell through. Entwistle earned two nicknames during his musical career, The Ox for his robust constitution and ability to out-eat and out-drink his bandmates, and Thunderfingers, for his remarkable bass playing. Bill Wyman, bassist for the Rolling Stones, described Entwistle as the quietest man in private but the loudest man on stage. Entwistle was among the first to use Marshall Stacks to hear himself over the cacophony of his bandmates, particularly Keith Moon's frenetic drumming and Pete Townsend's instrument-smashing antics. This led Townsend to adopt Marshall Stacks as well. Both musicians continued to expand and experiment with their setups, eventually using twin stacks with 200 watt amps, a significant upgrade from the typical 50 to 100 watt amplifiers of the time. This innovation contributed to The Who's reputation as the loudest band on the planet, culminating in a 1976 concert in London that reached 126 decibels, earning him a spot in the Guinness Book of World Records for the loudest rock concert in history. The Who significantly influenced their contemporaries' choice of equipment, with bands like Cream and the Jimi Hendrix Experience adopting similar gear. While they were pivotal in developing the iconic Marshall sound, having their equipment custom-built to their specifications, using Marshall gear for a few years, Entwistle eventually transitioned to a Sound City rig, with Townsend soon following. According to Townsend, Jimi Hendrix, their new label mate, was influenced by more than just the Who's volume. Both Entwistle and Townsend had been experimenting with amplifier feedback since the mid-1960s, and Hendrix's famous instrument destruction performances began only after witnessing the Who's auto-destructive art. Entwistle's wry and sometimes dark sense of humor often clashed with Townsend's more introspective and intellectual work. Despite contributing songs to every Who studio album except Quadrophenia, Entwistle was frustrated by Daltrey's refusal to let him sing his own songs. As he remarked, I got a couple of songs on per album but my problem was that I wanted to sing the songs and not let Roger sing them. This frustration led him to become the first member of the band to release a solo studio album, Smash Your Head Against the Wall in 1971. The album featured contributions from Keith Moon, Jerry Shirley of Humble Pie, Vivian Stanshaw, Neil Innes, and The Who's Roadie, Dave, Serrano, Langston. Entwistle's bass playing showcased fingerstyle, plectrum, tapping, and harmonics. He switched techniques to vary his sound, using a forceful plucking method for a trebly tone and a unique typewriter approach to create percussive and melodic passages. Studio recordings often didn't capture his live performance intensity, where he and Townsend would swap roles, with Entwistle providing rapid melodic lines and Townsend anchoring the rhythm. 
known for playing at extremely high volumes, Entwistle developed significant hearing loss, relying on lip reading and feeling the air from his amp stacks in his later years. The only formally trained musician in The Who, Entwistle played bass guitar, contributed backing vocals, and performed on various instruments including the French horn, trumpet, piano, bugle, and jews harp. He also occasionally sang lead on his compositions. Notably, he layered multiple horns to create the brass sections heard on tracks like 515, and arranged horn sections for live performances. Known as the quietest member, Entwistle significantly influenced the band's style, such as being the first to wear the Union Jack waistcoat, which became iconic for Townsend. In 1974, he compiled Odds and Sods, a collection of unreleased Who tracks, and designed the cover for their album The Who by Numbers, costing just £30 compared to the £16,000 spent on the Quadrophenia cover. Entwistle also pioneered bi-amping, sending high and low bass signals through separate paths for better control. His elaborate rig, nicknamed Little Manhattan, was a testament to his innovative approach to sound. In 1990, Entwistle toured with the short-lived supergroup The Best, which included Keith Emerson, Joe Walsh, Jeff Skunk Baxter, and Simon Phillips. Later, he formed the John Entwistle Project with drummer Steve Luongo and guitarist Mark Hitt, evolving into the John Entwistle Band with Godfrey Townsend replacing Hitt. They embarked on the Left For Dead tour in 1996, and later released an album of highlights, Left For Live, and the studio album Music from Van Perez, in 2000. Entwistle also toured and recorded with Ringo Starr's All-Star Band in 1995 and played notable gigs with The Who, including at Woodstock, 99. He designed and used the Status Graphite buzzard bass toward the end of his career. In 2001, Entwistle participated in Alan Parsons' Beatles tribute show A Walk Down Abbey Road, and played with The Who at the concert for New York City. He reunited with the John Entwistle Band for an eight-gig tour and performed his last concerts with The Who in early 2002. An expanded two-CD Left for Live Deluxe was released later that year, showcasing the band's performances. Entwistle's other solo projects and endeavors include becoming the first member of The Who to release a solo studio album in 1971 with Smash Your Head Against the Wall, gaining a cult following in the US for his dark humor. His other solo albums included Whistle Rhymes in 1972, Rigor Mortis Sets In in 1973, Mad Dog in 1975, Too Late the Hero in 1981, and The Rock in 1996. During the recording of The Who by Numbers in 1975, while the band took a break from touring, Entwistle performed solo concerts. In the 1990s, he led the John Entwistle Band on US club tours and joined Ringo Starr and his All-Star Band in 1995. As a talented artist, Entwistle frequently exhibited his paintings, many of which featured The Who. In 1984, he was the first artist besides Arlen Roth to create an instructional video for Hot Licks Video. From 1996 to 2002, Entwistle attended numerous art openings, personalizing his works with quotes and sketches of Boris. His final drawing, Eyes Wide Shut, completed in early 2002, showcased his evolved style with lifelike representations of Jimi Hendrix, Pete Townsend, Jimmy Page, and Eric Clapton, reflecting his growing confidence and willingness to share his art. Personally, on June 23, 1967, Entwistle married his childhood sweetheart, Alison Wise, and bought a spacious semi-detached home in Stanmore, London. He filled it with unusual artifacts, from suits of armor to a tarantula, showcasing his lifelong eccentricity and taste for the bazaar. In 1978, he moved to Stowe on the Wold in Gloucestershire, where his 17-bedroom Victorian manor Quaward resembled a museum and housed one of the largest guitar collections owned by any rock musician. Entwistle and Wise had a son Christopher, before their marriage ended in divorce. He later married Maxine Harlow on September 21, 1991 which ended in divorce in 1997. At the time of his death, John Entwistle had been in a 13-year relationship with Lisa Pritchett Johnson, who had worked in the music industry for several years before meeting him. Tragically, Lisa passed away in 2005 from a suspected drug overdose, with many believing she ultimately died of a broken heart. Sadly, on June 27, 2002, Entwistle passed away in room 658 at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Paradise, Nevada, just one day before the Who's 2002 US tour was set to begin. He was 57 years old. Entwistle had spent the night with Alison Rouse, a local stripper and groupie, who discovered him unresponsive the next morning. The Clark County Medical Examiner concluded that he died of a heart attack induced by cocaine, exacerbated by his existing severe heart disease and a habit of smoking 20 cigarettes a day. A prior medical examination for tour insurance had revealed high blood pressure and cholesterol, but had not detected that three of his arteries were blocked, which would have required surgery. 
Entwistle's funeral took place at St. Edward's Church in Stowe on the Wold, Gloucestershire, on July 10, 2002, followed by cremation and a private burial of his ashes at his mansion, Quarwood. A memorial service was later held on October 24 at St. Martin in the Fields in London. To cover anticipated estate taxes, his son Christopher auctioned off Entwistle's extensive guitar and bass collection at Sotheby's in London. And there you have it. Thank you for joining us in remembering John Entwistle, a true rock legend. His innovative bass playing and unforgettable presence helped define the sound of The Who and influenced countless musicians. Though he is no longer with us, his legacy lives on through his timeless music. Be sure to subscribe for more in-depth looks at the lives of the artists who have shaped the world of music. Take care and bye for now.